Welcome to SBC Insights with Dr. Bill. This video is going to take a look at why CPK by itself is not enough when you're talking about process capability. Suppose you want your supplier CPK to be greater than 1.33. Supplier A has a CPK of 1.7, supplier B has a CPK of 1.25. What can you say about these two suppliers? Temptation is to say supplier's A process is better, but don't let temptation get the better of you. Never draw conclusions based on a CPK value alone. So in this video, what we're going to look at is a five-step process to analyze process capability. We're going to plot the data as a control chart and interpret it. We want it to be in statistical control. Then we'll move on and construct a histogram and compare that to specifications to see does everything fall within specs. And then we're going to determine the natural variation of the process, and that's the variation in the individual values. We want that to be within the specs. And then we're going to calculate CP and CPK. And then we're going to combine all the information to summarize process capability. Dr. Donald Wheeler's book, Beyond Capability Confusion, is a reference for this video. So step one is to plot the data as a control chart and interpret the chart. The control chart has the data plotted as shown an average and control limits. The first step here is to ensure that our process is in statistical control. If it is, you can predict within limits what the process will do in the future. If it's not in control, you can't go any further with this analysis. So, suppose you sample your process four times a day. One, two, three, four. We're going to take those four samples and form a subgroup. And we have data for 30 days for our control charts. We'll just show the data for the first five days here. Day one has four samples, day two, etc. And for each day, you calculate the average of each subgroup and the range, the maximum minus the minimum for each one. And then we're going to plot the results on two charts. The first one is we're going to plot the subgroup averages on the subgroup averages chart, the X bar chart, calculate the overall average and control limits and add them and interpret the chart. This chart is in statistical control, as you can see. There are no points beyond the limits, and there are no patterns. So every day, the subgroup average will be between about 85 and 113, with an average of 99, as long as the process remains the same. Now we're going to do the same thing with the subgroup ranges. We're going to plot those on the range chart. Calculate the average range and the control limits, and add them to each chart. And here's the range chart for our data. It's in statistical control also. No points beyond the limits, and there are no patterns. So each day the subgroup range will be between 0 and 44.83 with an average of 19.65, as long as the process remains the same. So our process is in statistical control. Now what happens if your process is not in statistical control? What if it's not consistent and predictable? How do we go about calculating process capability? The answer is simple. You can't. That value has no meaning unless you're in statistical control. But if you're in control, you can move on to step two, where you're going to construct a histogram and compare it to specifications. So we're going to do that. Suppose the specifications for our process are 65 to 145. We construct the histogram as shown here from the data. And you can see the histogram fits easily within the specification limits, so 65 to 145. And since the process is consistent and predictable, you can expect that to continue. So our process appears to be meeting specifications easily. Now note, nothing's been said about the data at all in terms of having to be normally distributed, needing to be transformed, needing to be fitted to a non-normal distribution. The approach in these first couple steps, we don't need that, it doesn't matter. If a process is in control and nothing is anywhere near the specification limits on the histogram, the process is capable. But people still like to have a CPK value, so we're going to move on to step three to do that. And in step three, we're going to determine the natural variation of the process. And this is the variation in the individual data points when the process is in statistical control. You determine the natural variation using the following equation. It's the average plus or minus three times the average range divided by D2. And D2 is a control chart constant that depends on subgroup size. And for a subgroup size of four, it's 2.059. And now we can calculate the natural variation in the process. So with that calculation, we know that our individual values range from 70.36 to 127.6, and our data is going to fall within this range if the process stays in statistical control. Note that R bar divided by 2D2 is the estimate of the standard deviation. 
of the individual values. So that was 9.54. Again, we're not saying anything about assuming there's a normal distribution because for just about any set of data, most of the data is going to fall within plus or minus three sigma of the average. Now we move on to step four, we're going to calculate CP and CPK. CP calculation is the engineering tolerance divided by the natural tolerance. The natural tolerance is six times sigma. The engineering tolerance is the upper spec minus the lower spec. If it's greater than one, the process is capable of meeting specifications. It also defines how much elbow room your process has relative to the specifications. In this case, it's about 40% because you have a CP of 1.40, subtract one, and that's 0.4. But the process is not centered, so you're going to lose some elbow room. Remember our histogram there? It is not centered. So this is going to be shown through the CPK calculation, which is the minimum of the capability based on the upper and of the lower spec. And in this case, the upper is 1.61, the lower is 1.19. So CPL is the smallest and CPK is 1.19. Since it's greater than one, you're capable of meeting specifications. Now you're going to combine all the information just help summarize process capability. And we can say some very powerful things now about this process. The control chart shows a consistent and predictable process. The histogram shows the process var variation fits easily within the specification range. The values of CP and CPK confirm what the histogram shows. So this process is more than just consistent and predictable. It is capable of meeting specifications, just what you want. You have confidence in this process, and so should your customers and leaders. So summary, what have we done? We're just talking about looking at a CPK value by itself does not tell the entire story. We have to demonstrate statistical control with control charts. It's not in control. Get it into control. Only when your process is consistent and predictable can you move on. Then you use a histogram to determine if the process variation fits the specifications. And you calculate the process variation, CP and CPK, and you put it all together to fully describe the process capability of your process. So, thank you for watching the video. To see more SPC Insights with Dr. Bill, click, click on the subscribe button below. You can visit our SPC knowledge base with over 200 publications, and you can make your own charts and CPK analysis by our using our SPC for Excel software. So once again, thank you for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it.